You ever find yourself to be like Stu Pickles from the Rugrats? Just, just up at four o'clock in the morning making chocolate pudding because, because you've lost control of your life? That's kind of how I felt watching this movie. Readers, I admit that this might have been an absolutely foolish decision on my end. But considering everything, I decided that I was going to give Paul W.S. Anderson's next video adaptation, Monster Hunter, a chance. I wasn't going to pay money to give it a chance, but I was, I was going to give it a chance. So earlier on in the year 2021, I did just that. I watched Paul W.S. Anderson's Monster Hunter. I don't know what I expected. Okay, I might, I might, I might be jumping the gun here. So let me back up and better explain things. <laughs> Because while I, like I'm sure a number of you readers, was right in realizing that the premise was going the route of an isekai anime, aka the trope of the main character or a group of characters being transported to another world, there were other things about this movie that both worked and didn't work and due to the unfortunate situation of it being a Paul W.S. Anderson joint, a few things within the movie that hindered its possible success more than it actually helped. So I'll go on and get this out of the way now. The one thing that wasn't a hindrance were the movie's visuals. One thing I will give Anderson is that when he's enough of a fan of a video game franchise, he'll spare no expense to make sure that the creature and costume designs are 100% faithful to the source material, even if the story is 100% original. After all, this is the same director that, in Resident Evil Afterlife, did a shot-by-shot -shot replica of the fight with Wesker, Chris, and Shiva from Resident Evil 5. <laughs> And I know people like to make fun of him for that, but I constantly look at that fight in awe in how much of an exact replica that shit was. And I just gotta give kudos to where they're due. <laughs> and in the case of the Monster Hunter movie, that still holds true. Diablos was beautiful, Rathalos was spot on, and Gormagala, perfection. And that goes double for Tony Jaa's field team leader, Yamazaki-san's handler, and Ron Perlman's admiral, despite that horrible ass wig, Jesus Christ. But once you see how the Our World talent was utilized throughout the whole first act of the movie, outside of Mila Jovovich, see how it cut corners with its editing to get its 90 minute runtime, and find out that its budget was only $60 million, you can start to figure out that the aforementioned portions of the movie is where most of the budget went. And considering that damn near all of the live action portions of the movie were filmed in the desert and the only use of green screen to further explore the Monster Hunter universe outside of the gateway and sand ship was a small oasis, what they could do was extremely limited because of it. Then there's the writing. And whether or not going with an isekai-like story was the proper route to take it. And honestly, I wouldn't have had much of a problem with the angle if the writing was better. Not only did the movie fail to make me care about the soldiers that were isekai to the Monster Hunter universe, despite people like Megan Good being part of the number. Not T.I. though, I was fine with him dying. He can choke, real talk. But I didn't even care that much about Mila's character or her will to survive, even when we finally learn her name in the third act of the movie. 
But because there was nothing making me invested, I felt like I was just watching a very smartly budgeted CGI tech demo for whenever Hollywood decided to make an actual Monster Hunter movie. Because that's all that Paul W.S. Anderson's 2021 Monster Hunter movie is, readers. It's a tech demo to show off how accurate the monsters, the costume designs, the set pieces, and the CGI locations would be if someone put a team together that cared and truly appreciated the Monster Hunter franchise and wanted to bring it to the big screen. But because there was so much work put into making it, Paul W.S. Anderson decided to throw a half-baked, quickly put together isekai narrative around it and try to recoup some of what it cost to make it. And let me tell you, while some folks will blame the fact that it only made 28 million on Sony deciding to release it in theaters during the current health and safety crisis of 2021 and 2020, Something tells me that number wouldn't have been big enough for them to even break even, <laughs> even if that wasn't the case. Nevertheless, I hope Sony doesn't look at this flop as a complete loss and still sees the potential in the property because there definitely is potential in the property. We just need to find someone dedicated to finding the proper tone, story, and pacing for it that matches Paul W.S. Anderson's energy regarding his attention to visual detail and faithfulness to the source material. You know, so that he's not always tempted to make his wife the star of the movie. So with that being said, readers, your homework assignment for the day. Write in the comments section below how you felt about the 2021 live action Monster Hunter movie if you've seen it. <laughs> and since you've already came up with brilliant ways on how you would have handled a non-isekai pitch for a Monster Hunter movie in my previous video about the subject, if you feel like sharing with the rest of the class, if you think there's anything worth salvaging from Paul W.S. Anderson's take on the game franchise. It doesn't matter if it's incredibly obvious or impressively trivial. I'd love to know your thoughts either way. If you want to help financially support the channel, you can join my Patreon by clicking the card at the end of the video or in the link in the description down below, where you can also find a link to my merchandise store. Or if you prefer to give a one-time donation, you can find links to my PayPal and my coffee account in the description box as well. Also, make sure you subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications because I post new videos every Monday, Wednesday, and every other Friday. But until then, this is Redis 101. Class dismissed. <laughs>